So today we're gonna cut through all that marketing hype and tell you the truth about base layers, mainly breaking down the different types and finding the one that is best for you. Yes, base layers help you stay warm, but not in the way marketers are trying to make you think they do. Hey guys, welcome to Playing With Sticks. My name's Drew. Our family takes out small camper trailers throughout the state of Alaska, just sharing with you tips and tricks to have a more gratifying and simple camping experience. If that sounds like you, make sure you subscribe below. So base layers don't keep you warm, no matter what the marketing says. Base layers prevent you from getting cold. Now I know that's semantics, but further down the road in this video, that's going to be important because some of the marketing hype is pushing you towards clothes that actually don't wick the moisture away from you as a base layer should. I have been hypothermic multiple times. I went to grad school and did an internship in cold water survival, uh, which led me into my first career position in cold water survival. And I've been put in places where medical teams have watched me and dive teams to assist me as they're putting me into a hypothermic state. And this all came about because when I was 18 years old, I accidentally got a mild case of hypothermia on a solo 100 mile backpacking trip in the middle of the woods and it scared me. I really wanna share with you the power of the base layer. So if this video helps just one of you, it was totally worth making. So to stay warm requires great insulating layers, but to stay dry requires base layers. So a great example, a hot summer day, you get out of a lake and you have water on you. Why do you feel cold? You feel cold because the sweat on your body, or in this case, the water, is turning into a gas, it's evaporating. And that process causes energy loss, which makes you cold. The function of a base layer is to take that sweat, put it into the layer so that it can evaporate off the clothing, not off your skin. So let's start with fit. Fit is almost as important as the materials of the base layer itself. So a good fit is simple. It means it needs to be form fitting and tight. And why that is is because the base layer needs to touch every nook and cranny of your body. The more skin it can touch, the more moisture it can wick away. Now for warm weather, the guidance has always been to wear more looser fit clothing. That way you have more breathability. But lately, some of the best brands out there are making designs that spread out the moisture in the heat. So they're also saying to wear these tight fitting. So before buying base layers for warmer activities, just make sure you check their fitting chart. The next factor is the weight of your base layer. So base layers typically come in three weights. You have your lightweight, your midweight, and your heavyweight. So the lightweight base layers, they're going to be thinner, they're going to wick the moisture away quicker and easier, and they're gonna dry faster than the other two weights. As the layers go up, it's kind of interesting marketing because they don't go up a whole lot in thickness. So this is a mid-weight layer. It's going to be a little bit thicker, which will give you a little bit more insulation. It's not going to wick as quick as the lightweight layer, and it's gonna take a little longer to dry. But once you get up in layers so far, they're promising you warmer insulation. But that just means you're losing the wicking properties and it's taking longer to dry. So in my opinion, I think you stick to the light layers and the mid-weight layers. And really, if you want something more insulating, that should be your insulating layer that goes on top of the lightweight or the mid-weight. So what I noticed with the marketing, these what they call heavyweight layers, really aren't that much thicker than the midweight layer because they know if they make it a lot thicker, it's not going to have the properties you need for keeping it against your skin. Okay, next is the types of base layers. What material do they use? What performance factors do they have? And what's best for you? But before I get into that first one, the wool, I'm just gonna say any wicking material is going to be right for you in terms of keeping you safe, not letting you get cold. What we're gonna talk about here is a bit more subjective. It's about materials that hold more smells, materials that don't dry as fast, materials that feel better against your skin. It really comes down to personal preference, but I'm gonna share with you my thoughts on these. So lately, I bet you've heard a lot about merino wool. This seems to be the fabric that is replacing your standard wool because for one thing, it's not itchy. Number two, it is very lightweight and it is extremely soft and comfortable against your skin. 
So how this works is water comes into it and it can hold up to 30% of its weight in water before you feel that water. So what happens is the water gets into the core of the threads of the wool, right? I don't know if you can call wool thread, but the fibers of wool. And then it slowly, well not slow, it's still pretty quick, uh, lets it evaporate from that material into the air. Before moving on, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, backcountry.com. Like us, they realize that many of our lives are not what they used to be. We are all experiencing a new normal. But it shouldn't hold us back from adapting and finding beauty, happiness, and connections in the outdoors. Backcountry gave us these base layers to give us one less excuse for getting outdoors and reconnecting and finding our new normal. Not only does Backcountry have the best outdoor gear and products, they have hundreds of expert gear heads there 24 seven to answer your chat, email, and phones to help you find exactly what you need for your new normal. Backcountry has been partnering with the Nature Conservancy since 2008. And on checkout, you can donate to the Nature Conservancy to support its mission of protecting the lands and waters on which all life depends. Today, we're partnering with Backcountry to help you find your backcountry, wherever that may be. Use code PLAYINGWITHSTICKS for 15% off your first order at backcountry.com. But this, if you're traveling with another individual or you're like us in the community and you're in a teardrop trailer close, this does not hold smells. I mean, it might a little bit, but virtually it's odorless from your body. One of the downfalls of this merino wool is that because it's so soft and thin, it's not as strong to hold up to abrasion. This, you wouldn't want to be doing any bouldering. Even putting this under the backpack straps when you're backpacking with heavy loads could make wear marks in this. Um, so that'd be something, if you're going to use this as an outer layer, you may want to look at synthetics. So you guys know we love our merino wool and smart wool. Um, but we've always had blends. So we've had like a 90% merino and 10% synthetic. So when working with Backcountry, we asked for 100% merino wool so we can share with you in this video if there really is a difference between 100% and 10 less percent. At 250 weight, they're just thick enough for the spring, fall, and winter to give you some insulation, but thin enough to do that wicking of the moisture. And we don't usually go for the nice sweater look. We go for the nerd look and do the zip up. And why we do that, it's two purposes really. One purpose, it pulls moisture off of our necks, which is another area that perspires. And then it allows us to regulate our temperature. So I own a ton of synthetic base layers. It's an addiction. I own ones from $5 up to $100. I have boxes full of these things. And I think they're all great. Each level of them, they all keep you from losing that core temperature. They keep you safe out there. So this guy is 100% polyester. This one here is a blend of about 60% polyester to 40% acrylic. And then my more affordable, like five to $10 ones, they're a blend of a lot of things. 37% acrylic, 34% polyester, 25% rayon, and 4% spandex. What sets these apart from the other ones? They are the fastest wicking, so they pull the water quickest off your body. They are the quickest drying. They are the most resistant to abrasion, and they're the stinkiest. Uh, these guys absorb the most sweat and have the most trouble hiding that odor. But there is something I notice about these, and this is just my opinion, but even if I get these clean, it seems like the next time I wear them, the smell comes out even faster. So just a little bit of heat off my body and these are already stinking a bit. Um, but a lot of times you're going to choose that stinkiness over something like a smart wool that doesn't stink because this will allow you to pull that moisture quicker. So these are for high intensity activities that I will talk about a bit later. And one thing I didn't mention about these synthetic fibers is they keep you the driest in theory. And they say they make you feel the driest. And I'll talk about that later because in my opinion, these give me a feeling that I wouldn't consider to be dry.
Okay, so technology is always changing, right? So I didn't want to give you all my advice without trying the newest stuff. And what is the most innovative fabric out there right now? And of course, guess who made it? It's Patagonia. And on paper, it doesn't even sound that amazing. It is 51% merino wool, 49% recycled polyester. Uh, but I just got to tell you guys right off the bat here, if there are any of you who, like me, love the feeling of cotton long underwear, but hate how long it takes to dry. I mean, do you guys all remember hanging your cotton over your fireplace, getting it to dry after a ski trip? This feels like cotton long underwear. They've created it in a way that has like waffle patterns, but it's supposed to have the same or higher insulating properties of these 250 um, weight smart wool. So check this out. You can stick this over, you can see me, it's kind of like, so this smart wool and this thin new technology from Patagonia with the waffles are supposedly keeping the same amount of insulation. And I agree, this thing is warm and comfy and so is this. Now, even though this is 50%, to me, it only feels like 10% of uh, synthetic. I feel a little bit of that clammy feel. Uh, but it is almost non-existent with this. Um, the only issues people are saying is, like I said, when I showed you how thin this was over the camera, in the future, people are wondering how long will it hold up? Uh, time will tell because it's a new technology. But for those of you who wanna have the best and the newest, this may be the one for you. So this is the portion I wanted to get to. I was most excited to share with you how these make me feel. And now we've hit the blend section. So I'm talking a blend of merino wool and synthetics. And you know, this is very subjective. You're not all going to agree with this, but in my small circle of friends, there are others who feel this way. So I thought, you know, if I feel this way and they do too, maybe you will. And what I find is even though the synthetics are the ones that keep you the most dry, if I touch myself, I'm bone dry with a synthetic. For some reason, they give me a feeling that I'm not. And that's hard to explain. I, I kind of use the term clammy. And once I start moving just a little bit and my temperature rises, I don't feel cold to the bone, but it feels like my skin has some I can't even use the word, it's clammy. It just feels a little cold. And I feel like that the whole time I'm recreating. So when I'm biking and I stop, I really feel it. As the wool percentage increases, I get less and less of that. So I've always owned 50-50 uh, because that's about what I could afford. But today you can go out and get 90-10, so 90% wool, 10% synthetic for about the same price as the 50-50 before. I mean, if you go 90-10, it is a fraction of the price of 100% smart wool. And to most of you, I bet you may not even know the difference. So when do you choose each type of fabric? When are they best to use? Well, I would say the wool, the merino wool, whenever you're doing a longer trip, if it's multi-day, these typically are enough for your strenuous activities to still wick. They're going to keep that odor down so you can wear it day in, day out. If it is a one day activity, it's something you're doing in the afternoon, I'd go synthetics. Uh, I own synthetic everything. I have synthetic underwear. But if you're doing cold weather activities and you're just sitting around the fire, maybe doing a little bit of hiking, some light cross-country skiing, silk is pretty hard to beat in this cold weather. So May and I, working in the field of early education, we're kind of believers that little kids are just tolerant to cold. They're not as particular about their comforts. And so we've never bought them the best gear for outdoors. But we started realizing lately, you can only stay out as long as the least comfortable person in your party. And so East, now that he's getting bigger and he's going hard on his bike and his snowshoes, once he works up a sweat and it gets into his cotton, he's the first guy done. So we picked up from backcountry 
some Burton little, they're called first layers, I think. They're for skiing for little toddlers. Not only is it wicking that sweat off of his little body and keeping him warm, but they're also doubling up as his sleepwear when we're out camping and home. Um, so we never would have pushed this before, but we will say to folks, make sure you're not picking something cotton from them. You can find something at the thrift store or at a local store. Just get something that is uh, synthetic of some sort and you're gonna be a lot happier out there. So all these fun layers, the base layers I showed you today, so this Patagonia shirt, our smart wool tops and bottoms for both May and I, and our smart wool socks, I'll put all those in the description for you guys. Don't forget guys to share in the comments what base layers are working best for you, brand styles you found. Guys, get on those layers, get out there, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next episode.